welcome back to the Absolute Sound Show. You're back with episode three, and I'm Marco from Marketing with my colleague here today, Anand, again. Hi, guys. Um, he's, of course, doing the home theater uh, department. And uh, in the previous episode, we were discussing the different types of speakers that you may encounter in a home theater setup. And today, we have something a little special. Um, I've put together some uh, AI generated images because okay. we want to have uh, different scenarios that you guys might encounter. And today Anand is going to be discussing what he would do for that type of uh, setup. And um, you know, just for the sake of this exercise, I generated some AI images that Anand will take a look at and he's going to be showing us what speakers he's going to be using for that. All right, you ready? Yeah, pretty good, man. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. So let me just uh, grab my iPad over here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start off with, um, we have four different scenarios. We're going to start off with the first one, which is going to be the apartment slash uh, condominium kind of setup. All okay. right. Okay, so maybe so, uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's to make it easier mm -hmm. uh, because we are in Singapore and when it comes to space, uh, uh, let's describe it. You know, what are the different kinds of properties? So we have HDB, we have what we call a condominium, then we have a landed space. Yes. Right? And then these space is very, you know. Uh, so I guess, uh, again, when it comes to space, it's either, you know, a small space, medium or large. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, if you have a large space, you have the freedom of having big speakers, if you have a medium space, you know, subjective, you can go medium or you can go large if the space allows you to. And if it's a small space, you know, of course, the last thing you want to do is bring a white elephant inside because the space is so tiny. So what I meant by that was, you know, go for slightly smaller speakers. But every space is different. So I guess it's a good yeah. thing you brought that. Yeah. That's so, OK, here we go. Shall we? Uh, this is the first one, mm -hmm. the condo. Wow, that, that's AI. <laughs> yeah, I must say, man, I had to, I had to take a few uh, minutes to generate those. So, yeah. wow, this this is awesome. Uh, I, I like the concept. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna flip it, so at least you guys can see. So if you look carefully, you know what we have over here is uh, we have a feature wall, we have a floating TV console. TV is mounted onto the feature wall. If you notice, the couch is against the wall. Nice, decent window, you know, which replicates a nice living space. I won't call this space small. Neither will I call this space large. But uh, if this was my space and not forgetting what we are trying to do, we are trying to have a nice uh, overall experience because you're buying sound and how the sound can be engaging. So definitely, I would suggest floor standing speakers. Reason being, we have ample space on the side of the console, which allows us to place the speakers, your main front left and right. Also, the speakers then becomes, you know, at a certain distance because mm -hmm. you don't want the speakers to be close to each other, which, which is what we call stereo staging. Center speaker, lovely space, can sit on top of the console. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I also like the idea because it's a feature wall, so your cable management becomes very easy because you can run the wires behind your feature mm. wall. Yeah, I think that's important. You know, important. when you're planning, because there's always some space. Mm -hmm. um, you can go into the fall ceiling because I can see there are some drop lights in here, which allows you to come back. And your surround speakers, so you know, imagine you had side tables on the side of the couch where you have your table lamp, just place mm -hmm. them there. or Go for bookshelf speakers on the stands you know, mm, okay. to make it look nice because it should complement the space. And if we are already doing that much, then I would say future-proof yourself. Every other content nowadays is recorded in Atmos and technologies will change. Might as well have two more speakers you know, mounted into the fall ceiling, which gives you the effect effect of atmospheric sound above you mm -hmm. and home theater system you know one always it's good to have a sub because you want to hear oh, okay. that rumbling effect yeah um, ample space in the front so 
So actually, what would you suggest if, let's say, someone is renting the space? So they, let's say they have a condo, but they're renting. The mm -hmm. landlord said, nope, you can't put anything installed in the ceiling. How would you adapt to that situation? Uh, interesting. So uh, if you go back to our previous episode, that's where I spoke about what a satellite speaker is, what are bookshelf speakers, what are floor standing speakers. Mm -hmm. And then there was a part where I you know, explained about what we call speakers which you place on top of an existing speaker. They're referred to as a foot firing atmos. Ah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So imagine you still have your floor standing speakers. You can have the upward firing speakers sitting on top of that, mm -hmm. which gives you the effect of atmos. Yeah. Okay. Now, because it's rented, yeah. so it's, what you're doing is you're just having speakers which are what we call freestanding. You mm, can always okay. take them from one location to another. And now that you mentioned that, uh, in my previous episode, I also mm -hmm. uh, spoke about what is custom integration or custom installed speakers, which you can hide inside a feature wall. Ah, uh, yes. So, mm -hmm. of course, you know, that will be good for those who are planning to be in that space for some time. Yeah. So, but not for a renter. Yeah. So, so if you're renting, those are most likely not going to be the choice because technically you mm -hmm. can't drill into the wall. You can't put install speakers in there. Yeah, because but, you're customizing the space mm. for the speakers. Whereas here, the speakers basically can just move in into this particular location, which makes it much easier. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. And uh, no hard and fast rule, to be frank and honest. Uh, one can go for even satellite speakers, you know, if need be, if you you know, if that's the kind of look you're going for. But then, do you remember if the because space is medium size, not large, mm. then satellite speakers needs to be complemented, excuse me, with a good sub mm -hmm. to bring out the overall high, mids, and the low. Mm, okay. uh, what do you say? Should we? Um, okay, so I can see I have some speakers here. All right, yeah. Why don't we, we move we a show bit, them? Yeah. yeah. Just to give Let's, you, just we'll to show give you guys, guys a rough idea. Yes. Why yeah. don't we do that? Okay, All so right. I'll move my. Thanks, Marco. So let's take just a, a particular speaker. So what you're seeing here, right? These are referred to as center speakers. Mm -hmm. They are the most important speakers when it comes to creating a home theater because it's all about the speech. So uh, this satellite speaker is a center speaker. So this is really petite compared to this center speaker. Yeah. So imagine having this center speaker in a small space. Mm, yeah. So that would be a little bit of a challenge. All right. Or having this center speaker in a large space. All right. Mm -hmm. Again, it becomes challenging. So we have another size. So this you know, is that's the... also a center speaker. Mm -hmm. That's also a center speaker. Okay. So based on space, then you pick what's right. You know, if you have a large space, you have a product for that. You have a decent medium-sized living area. You don't want something to be overpowering, so you can go for something which is still pleasing to look at. So this brand is Sonos Favor. That's the Lumina series. Lumina series, right, right? here. This is the Olympica series, and that's, so that's the Olympica Nova. Olymp yeah. Okay. And this is the Senator, but that's Senator. the series two, which is oh for the larger the larger the, one because yeah. there's a small one of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this brand over here is Ellipson. So Ellipson does lovely speakers. So this is more towards the lifestyle looking speakers from that brand, Satellite, where every speaker could be the same. So it could be your center, it could be your front, it could be a surround. And then from there, you build a system. Because they're satellite, you know, they only give you the mids and the highs. So you would like to have a base because what you're looking at in any good speaker is, uh, I don't know if you guys can see, so I'll move, you know. Highs, mids, low. Okay. Highs, mids, low. Bookshelf speaker, highs, mids, but you know, you can have a base which gives you the low. So the base being a subwoofer. A subwoofer. Okay, all right. So that could be one way. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should like move back to our <laughs> positions. Yeah. Okay. All I right. guess the uh, best part is, you know, um, have you ever come across let's say two houses which are similar, you know, even if you had, mm. if you were living in a kendo, it's identical layout, oh, but yeah, no yeah. two homes are the same. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, 
there's always something for that particular space. Mm, okay. Say. All right. Okay. So that was the condo setup. Uh -huh. uh, now, since we've gone through the different types of speakers, let's go to the next step up, which would be something like an HDB uh, living ah, room. Okay. So okay. Uh, HDB, the housing board. So HDB, yeah. I would say. Before that, let me show you what the, <laughs> what it looks like. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. That's the HDB. Oh man. Uh, AI again. Okay. The image says it all, man. It's 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 beautiful. So you can see again, it's a decent space. Uh, to me, it looks a bit more spacious mm -hmm. than the previous one. It could be due to the furniture, right? Or uh, or the space could be the same, but because the furniture is petite, so it looks larger. But there is ample room, I would say. You know. Uh, yeah, I would put this at medium to large. Medium already. to large, yeah. right? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's not. Um, it's pretty. I would say maybe quite typical for an HDB to be yeah, larger. Yeah, they're, they're much larger. Yeah, so. some some condos, I guess, depending on where you live, some mm -hmm. can be a bit smaller. So that's why I used that previous example for the condo. Okay. But uh, this one definitely um, could be a typical HDB size for yep. the living room. So uh, maybe you could explain, like, you know, what kind of system you'd put in here. So personally, for this space, I would say one could go for small, one could go for medium, one could go for, again, a floor standing speaker, not necessarily the large floor standing speakers, because floor standing speakers, again, do come in different sizes. So it, again, boils down to what is it that we want to achieve. Um, if it was satellite speakers, you know, uh, and you wanted something minimalist, mm -hmm. One could have your LCR, which refers to as your left center right speakers on the console. Yeah. LCR, left center, uh, left center right. right. Okay. So that's the term mm -hmm. LCR, left center right mm -hmm. on the console, which makes it look very clean. Or you could have your center speakers sitting uh, on top of the console. Your yeah. left and right speakers can be on stands against satellite speakers, or they could be mounted on the side of the TV, depending upon the look which you want to go for. You could have your surround speakers again, because you would want them to be at ear level if you're planning to do Atmos on the side of the couch, which okay. is opposite the TV. So either side of the couch, you have your... Yeah, so okay. again, you know, mm -hmm. you could have them wall mounted if the speaker allows you, mm -hmm. because you need to understand what speaker you're, you know, the person is suggesting you, or place them on side tables. If you have side tables, uh, or place them on stands if the speakers ideally stands. Uh, ideally that would be like ear level right because preferably ear yeah. level. okay uh, of course you don't want to take your surround speakers closer to your ceiling height because then the purpose is lost mm, okay. uh, yeah. again I see sorry have to wear specs <laughs> <laughs> I can see a false ceiling uh, you know go for in ceiling speakers um, a decent distance between your uh, TV to the couch. So you can have what we call 0 0.4. 0 0.4 refers to four ceiling speakers. Mm -hmm. 0.2 refers to two ceiling speakers. 0.6 refers to six ceiling speakers. So the, the, the point, effect. yeah, the 5.1.4, 5.1.2. Exactly. Is, okay. Uh, Y4, so that the sound can move overhead versus mm -hmm. having two speakers where the sound just moves left and right so you get more movement the more speakers you have yeah. and it basically gives you that extra movement for the ceiling uh yeah right. so imagine a scene where you know helicopter scene mm -hmm. the helicopter is moving or it's hovering above you so you do hear it moving you know okay. making a circular mm -hmm. motion or for example top gun you know mm -hmm. you want to enjoy that um this space also allows you to do bookshelf you know, bookshelves okay as yeah. well uh because to me, it's flexible. So you can have a center speaker, which can sit below the TV. Bookshelf speakers can go, you know, because it's a shelf, mm. so they can sit yeah. on it or have bookshelf speakers on the stands. stands. Right. You know, a smaller bookshelf could be your surround as well, mm -hmm. right? And then you could still have a sub because you would need a sub. So usually... For something of this size, mm -hmm. uh, are you just looking at one sub or would you be considering two at that point? Um, how would you decide on that? When it comes to 
home theater and when we talk about sub, uh, having a good base is again one of the most challenging things. Mm-hmm. Uh, olden days, you know, when we talk about, let's say 10 to 12 years or even older than that. You olden have days. One sub, okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> single sub. All right. And then, you know, they came out with two subs because that basically allows you to have the low frequencies evenly distributed. Mm-hmm. So some AB receivers allows you to put two. Okay. The new AB receivers even allow you to put four. Four. Four wow. subs. Okay. So, because uh, base uh, is omnidirectional, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, placement also matters. Mm. So, okay. you know, typically you would have your base, you know, in the front, left and right, closer to a 90 degree angle, but not every house or every space allows you. So a base mm. could be just somewhere freestanding. So it's based on the situation that yeah, you have. Yeah, it's very subjective based okay. on the situation. And but usually uh, Anand would probably explain that to you. If, let's say, you do drop by to our showroom, he would explain based on your specific layout, right? And what yeah. is it that, yeah, it also comes back to what speakers, be it satellite, be it bookshelf, or be it floor stand there. Mm. Uh, driver size, which I haven't spoken about, mm-hmm. also matters. Okay. And uh, maybe uh, I can explain you that later, yeah? Yeah, okay. All right. So that could be one option uh, in this space, uh, I would say. And uh, because I don't see any uh, feature wall here, mm-hmm. so definitely uh, when it comes to, you know, having speakers which are custom installed, those in-wall speakers, mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's a no. <laughs> Mm, because okay. the design, yeah. if you see, it's yeah. a very minimalist, very clean yeah. okay. look for the space. All right. So that sums up the HDB setup. Mm-hmm. And then now let me show you, we're going to move on to the next one, which is going to be uh, the landed property. All right. Interesting. So landed property um, is definitely going to be pretty big. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to look at maybe a living room. So this is the one right here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So as you can see on one side, so, you have... So that's... Okay, so can you guys see? Yeah. All right. Uh, one side, you have the glass. Yeah, uh, so it's an open sliding. Let's say it's sliding. a balcony. Yeah, balcony. You know. Um, a very, I would say, wide feature wall where the TV is mounted. You know, you mm-hmm. can easily go for an 85-inch TV or even slightly bigger if you wanted to. Or you can even have... A TV with, you know, those ultra short throw projectors, which is the trend nowadays, where a living room can also be converted into a cinema room. So you can have best of both worlds. So the screen with a yeah. short throw projector. Short throw projector. Okay. So right. that's, so we'll, we'll talk about that as well. So to me, this space is considered, uh, you know, large. Mm. Uh, I, I'm not comparing it with a dedicated theater room, but it's considered big. And uh, now... If it was me, of course, uh, you know, I would make some tweaks because when I'm looking at the console, you know, Mm, uh, that's basically edge to edge. Yes. Because it's edge to edge, you know, some people ask, you know, big space, can I go for floor standing speakers? It's not that you can't, you can, but they will look a bit odd, you know, because they are jutting out. Oh, yeah. Right? I guess so, if, if maybe it was like a statement piece kind of floor standing yeah, speaker. Then you could do that. Yeah. Where it's just two nice looking speakers which are complementing the space. Yeah, yeah. And then the center speaker can be hidden. Mm, okay. Yeah. You know, so it's just those two speakers. So just have it like a minimalist kind Very of Very minimalist. Feel. Okay. So that's one design. Mm-hmm. Or you could, uh, if, uh, if this was my place, I'll tell the idea, okay, let's reduce the console, which mm-hmm. allows me to put two standing speakers, you know, on either sides. Mm, okay. My center speaker mm-hmm. sits on top of, again, because you want it to sit on top of the console, not below. Mm-hmm. Uh, some models you can place below because those models uh, come with certain stands. For example, if you the look one at... one over here? Perfect, yeah. yeah so that, that is the model okay. from Sonos Favor. Yeah, so that, that kind of gives it a bit of the angling yeah, so to... So they have, yeah. the, uh, they have uh, a base which mm-hmm. allows you to angle and tilt the speaker towards the listening position. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it varies from models to models. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go for higher end bookshelf speakers as well. Not the mm-hmm. entry, but the higher series, which basically gives you a decent close performance 
as if it was a decent flow standing speaker. Or so those would be a bit of the larger size. A larger size, right? yeah, not yeah. the petite uh, yeah. so-called bookshelf because uh, every manufacturer has different ranges mm. and in those ranges you have different kinds of speakers to complement the space. Yeah, so I, th I think uh, for something like, let's say, the Sonus Faber, the mm -hmm. higher series. So like, the Seneto uh, bookshelves yeah. or Olympica, Olympica Nova, bookshelves, yeah. Olympica uh -huh. Nova bookshelves. Mm -hmm. Or if I was talking about, let's say, the other brand, Ellipson, which we do. So in Ellipson, they do have bookshelf speakers. Uh, so we're looking at bookshelf speakers which have a bigger driver, base mm. driver, because uh, normally every space has air. I'm mm. sorry, I'm going technical, but... The job is to move air in that particular space, then to, you know, struggle. So yeah. an eight inch driver versus mm -hmm. a four inch tiny yeah, bookshelf yeah. speaker. I can't make out whether the couch is in the center and if the dining table is behind or something. Mm -hmm. So let's say if it was in the center, then I would say have again two speakers on the either side of the L shape uh, couch. Mm -hmm. I can see there's cove lights. So how does the cove light actually um, affect, let's say, the installation of the Atmos speaker? Okay, so cove light, uh, it also depends upon how it has been designed because mm -hmm. one way is if you have a you know decent ceiling depth, mm. which is the inner part, which allows you to put in ceiling speakers and the cove light is slightly lower just to give you the effect, then you can place speakers in the center. But if that's your concrete ceiling, mm then it becomes a bit challenging because in this design, you know, it won't be right to put the Atmos speakers right in the corner because there's a certain mm. position when it comes to yeah. Atmos. Because mm -hmm. uh, so you need that extra space You need that extra speakers. space, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I would say that would be once we are on site, you know, and based on uh, actual furniture layout, we mm -hmm. can guide you along. Good thing is that it's an open uh, sliding door, so even if you sit outside, you know, once in a while, you can be playing music and the sound could travel in that particular space mm -hmm. as well. Uh, here, would the um, would you say those uh, upward firing Atmos could work as well on this kind of situation? Uh, Assuming that it's like maybe okay, a so concrete. It, okay, so it is still better to have them than not to have them. Oh yeah. Okay. Right, uh, because mm -hmm. you will get some effect, mm -hmm. but uh, when I'm looking at the space, I'm seeing it as a very open space. Uh, now, if mm -hmm. I'm putting the upward firing speakers, then I would like to put them on top of a floor standing speaker versus a bookshelf speaker, so that the upward firing speakers, the distance between the speaker and the ceiling, it's close. Oh, I see. It being far mm -hmm. because it needs to bounce, yeah, reflect and come back to the listening location. Uh, fair enough. Okay. That so, uh, you know, if a customer is open to making some changes, there are ways to place the speakers and the ceiling. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So that was the landed property. Uh, yeah. And not forgetting a place like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a decent space. You can go for four subs easily. Oh, wow. Okay. So You'll you thank could... me for that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus they, they, they probably, you know, have enough of that space where the neighbors don't get affected. Yeah, whatever, right? and the so, space allows you yeah. to, because even if they are neighbors, remember, mm -hmm. you can tweak the sound. Yeah, that's true. It's entirely up to you, you know, so if you're driving a car, it's mm -hmm. up to you whether you want to drive it at 60 or you want to go all out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, if it were up to him, he'd be like, oh, oh, just go all out, just go all out, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, right. so uh, moving on. This uh -huh. one is going to be a dedicated home cinema, all right? So in other words, someone's home where they have a room dedicated just for their home theater nice. setup, all right? So now, here we go. I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Wow. Wow. I wish it was my space. Okay. Yeah, me so too. <laughs> so before I flip, uh, just a request, if you guys are planning to have a dedicated space for your home theater, then I would say be open to having, you know, a, a higher speaker count system if possible, because that space is intended to be a theater room where you can have multiple rows or a cinema so-called where you have, you know, 
couch and big bags or you call it a man cave concept mm. uh, so sc- screen size should also match mm-hmm. the sound size the last thing you want is you know a 55 inch tv with huge speakers or same way you have uh, you know very big screen <laughs> you have such tiny speakers where they're like trying to shout out they so give it that effect essentially don't don't half ass it just go all the way yeah i mean right? okay. yeah it's a space <laughs> yeah. and uh, based on that space you know uh, let the guy who knows his job design what's right again coming back to you know what kind of look one wants to go for whether you want to go for in wall because of clean the typical theater or it's this you know dual space man cave concept where you want to show speakers and still hide some that can be done uh so coming back uh, to the space mhm is that, that is, lovely that is cool that is super cool ai yeah. what can we say <laughs> so if you look carefully let's talk about visual first mhm AI awesome job so you have a uh, i can see it looks like a easily you know based on the space it looks like a 150 inch or even a 170 inch screen mm-hmm. i can see an ultra shot throw i want no so it's not an ultra shot throw it's a shot throw projector which is mounted close to the screen so advantages you know you don't have those beam hitting your eyes mm. when compared to your normal traditional projector which you would be placing it slightly further back yeah Uh, you save on HDMI cable cost, but then again, resolution price point also varies. Mm-hmm. Now, coming to speakers, so maybe I can give you three scenarios. Now, if you see the space, it's clean, and if you wanted to keep it as clean as possible as this, you can go for what we call micro perforated screens, screens mm-hmm. which allow you to basically put speakers behind. so there are very tiny holes on the screen uh which basically allows, allows the sound to come out so here is that like the acoustically transparent acoustically transparent okay all right so yeah the term is yeah, acoustically transparent yeah i think you've mentioned that to to me before so we right. use it here so mm-hmm. this is a brand called stuart us company they've been making screens since ages uh on dotly the best screen makers they only make screens once you order it's not like other brands no oh, made to uh, order made uh, yeah so they're made to order mm-hmm. because um, they believe in the material mm. now because it's a decent space so your lcr lcr standing for again left center right speakers can be hidden behind the screens I so see. you don't see any speakers so, so it's kind of like maybe closer to how the actual home yeah. like like when you go to a movie cinemas yeah. do it when you go right. to a cinema mm-hmm. you know everything is coming from that big screen. Oh okay okay. Yeah. Right? So that's... even the subwoofers can mm-hmm. be hidden behind the screen. Now because it's a dedicated space the last thing you want to do is you know hush hush I would normally suggest come over take your time plan based on what kind of look you want to go for you know because here a lot can be done and uh, you should plan accordingly you know you can go for standing speakers which look pretty and nice give you awesome performance you can go for things which are hidden give you off of awesome performance don't compromise on low bass because bass is what makes you feel you know so don't say okay let's just go for one sub you know uh, go for two subs if uh, you know if would that be the minimum for something of that size oh uh, yeah but then the subs have to be of a decent uh, mm-hmm. you know they should be able to go deep low frequencies mm. so personally i'll say drop by uh, and we are here to guide you along the way and uh, my main aim and my main goal for you guys would be you know you do this once you don't do this every day pre plan we can also think about future proofing and stuff mm-hmm. you know and then from there we'll take it how it goes keeping in mind resolution kind of screen kind of sound system because they all have to somehow gel with each other. Mm. It's the whole synergy between It's all the components. It's the whole component. synergy between them. Right. And of course you you would be suggesting to them the size of the screen. The... Oh definitely yeah. Definitely okay. because there's a certain calculations mm-hmm. which are needed. That's our job, you know. Mm-hmm. Leave it to us and uh, 
based on where the couch is going to be, you know, what should be the right angle, what should be the screen size, what format should the screen be at, you know, based mm. on what kind of content you watch. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, we want you to have, you know, things which are capable of 4K or even higher, because if you want that 4K HDR, 4 million pixels or upscale 8 million pixels because images large, you want it to be sharp, mm. you know. Uh, at, at the same time, the receivers which can decode dif- different audio formats. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so we can guide you on that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Best thing is, uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, always, you know, you can text below. Let us know, and uh, myself and Marco. Yeah, leave a comment under the video if, let's say, you have any questions. Maybe we can discuss that in some future episodes. All right, and um, so I guess that sums up the one, the dedicated home theater or home cinema concept. All right, and um, I guess that's about it. There is, of course, uh, you know, many options out there depending on your space and you know as usual if you have any particular questions you can always get in touch with us at absolute sound um, you're more than welcome to visit us over at the adelphi mall you know my colleague anand over here would be more than happy to answer your questions in person and uh, do you have anything else that you might want to add no just just the more you share the easier it is for me uh, you're making my life Okay, perfect. So that sums up our episode three of the Absolute Sound Show. Thank you very much for joining us. And as usual, you know, like, subscribe. And if you have any questions, you feel free to comment or, of course, give us a call as well. All right, thanks very much. Cheers. Have a good day, guys. Bye.